Hey, how have you been? Do you remember me? I'm Adrian from BitductionCrate.com. We met at the, um... It'll come to me, it's fine. Today, I actually, uh, I would like to talk to you about how we pulled off the Ant-Man effect from our Avengers video. You know, the one, the thing that Ant-Man does, the only thing that he does, the thing that you just saw me do just now. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a second. One shot, one kill. Damn it! One shot, one kill. Damn it! One shot, one kill. Son of a... Hey, Clint, your fly is down. Right into one-eyed hawk. That's why I always wear a cup. Good luck growing that one back. So to start us off, what I have here is just a clean plate here on the bottom. Uh, that's just a still frame. It's tie remap to just be a still frame. And then I have this second layer, which is uh, Ant-Man on his own background as well. And we need to get him separated from the background. So let me turn off that volume. Uh, we need to separate him out from the background. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is uh, scalp him. Sorry. I hate rotoscoping with a burning passion. I've been up on diet. I ain't even done a fraction. It's enough to drive a man insane. Moving little boys frame by frame. All right. So I have got that roto done. Um, I'm now an old man. My wife has left me for someone younger. My kids are all grown up and they never call me anymore. But the good news is I'm ready to continue with the tutorial. So I've got this guy rotored out. You don't really see a difference because there's two layers here. One with, uh, with Ant-Man on his background and then one on him soloed out. And uh, that's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the Ant-Man one. So we're just dealing with the roto and the background and what i want to do is grab the pan behind tool up here and find the anchor point sometimes it's hard to see pull it down to like where his feet are and go to the first frame of where we started rotoing and now we are faced with a choice it's time to scale him down we can either scale him really small and have him already in the scene right just really small <laughs> actually i like that quite a bit um, or we can scale him down to zero so it's like he's not here and then he's here I'm gonna go with the ladder so I've got him scaled to zero right now let's set a keyframe move forward like an arbitrary amount set it back to 100 and I don't know if that's the right spot because I couldn't see what I was doing so let's just see how that feels okay and we're gonna want to uh, Add an easy ease to the second keyframe. You don't really need one on the first keyframe if you're scaling up from zero. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. That looks fantastic. No need to activate the motion blur just yet. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is first I'm gonna go to the composition settings and I just wanna make sure that my start time code is at zero because uh, sometimes it's not depending on how you import your footage, but having it at zero is gonna help us out a little bit for this one. So just make sure that's at zero. So let's go ahead and uh, hit the solo button, which is right here next to the eyeball and the sound and the lock and all that. And um, we're going to go ahead and give this a render. So let's go ahead and send it to the render queue or to the media encoder if that's what you use. And what we need to do is go ahead and save this out as a PNG sequence. So that way it's a sequence of images and it has alpha. So it's not going to be a video. It's going to be a bunch of pictures with transparency so that's great hit ok and uh, what we need to do is make a special new folder and pop into that folder and give our sequence a name go ahead and save that render it out and wait for that ding beautiful now that that has been rendered let's go ahead and activate the motion blur on that uh, layer that's scaling up we didn't want it before because we needed everything to be crisp but now 
we don't need that anymore. So let's just turn that motion blur on. Okay, and another thing I wanna do is once Ant-Man is at his full size, let's go to that layer below that has Ant-Man already on the background. Set a keyframe for the opacity is zero and just over a couple of frames faded in. So that way uh, we can have some nicer looking edges. As you can see, we, we get our natural edges back, uh, which is great because mine were a little bit sloppy because I'm not good at roto. Okay, so we've got our ant, our ant boy scaling up, which is beautiful. So let's go ahead and bring in that sequence that we made. So let's import it. However, we don't want to import it as a sequence. So there's this button here called PNG sequence. Unclick that, and this way we can import it as individual images, which is exactly what we want. So it looks like we have exactly 100 of them. That's interesting. I didn't plan it out that way. Let's go ahead and import them. Okay, so these are going to become the energy that comes off of Ant-Man's body. So if you think about it, we don't really need any of the images before this point, which is, let's say, frame number 29. So as you can see, these images are numbered according to what frame they're supposed to be. So let's go ahead and select 0 through 29 and just delete them. And also, we don't need energy popping off every frame. I'm thinking every three frames or so. So what else I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and you know, keep this first one, but then these next two, we're going to delete those. And uh, so I'm just going to highlight them skipping every third one. But uh, to kind of mimic some easing, once I get like, you know, part of the way through, maybe I'll skip to keeping every fourth one. You know, and after I've done that for a while, maybe start selecting all of them except every fifth one. Now we're left with just a few, which is great. So let's kind of pick one. Uh, we don't want to start with the first one. You know, that would make sense to do, except for we can't see it because it's too small. So I'm going to just take one from the middle. Maybe it's number 55. And since it's called number 55, I know I want it to be on frame 55. So let's go there and start the image there. And as you can see, it's uh, just a still frame of number 55. So that's perfect. So we want to add some effects to this thing. So the first one I want to add is a fine edges effect. Drop that right the heck on and invert it. And I want to also add a um, levels effect because right now there's a little bit of noise in here and that's really going to start to add up when we have a whole bunch of these. So let's just kill that with this levels. We're going to crush the blacks. I always move the wrong one first. Um, so that's just a good habit to have. Everything you do, you should do wrong on the first try. Okay, so I, I have, I didn't get rid of the details, I just got rid of the noise. So that looks great to me. Let's go ahead and hit S for scale. And I'm going to move the anchor point down to where the feet were, just like we did before. And, you know, so we set a keyframe for the scale at the beginning and then move forward a little bit and just scale it up. Okay, you might have to tweak this later, but uh, we're just trying to get this at a nice speed that we like. Normally you want to easy ease your keyframes, but I'm not going to in this case because easing is really something that you do when you're coming to a stop. And I want to give the illusion that this energy would keep going if it were still visible. We can ease the first one maybe. Really whatever you want to happen to these lines over time, you can just do whatever you want. So if you want, you can add a turbulent displace. You know, uh, start that with a zero for the amount. And go forward to when this dude is big and just raise it up. But we're gonna wanna bring our size down because that looks ridiculous. This whole process looks ridiculous to bring the size down. All right, so as he grows, he kinda starts to distort a little bit, right? Yeah, that's a, it looks weird, but that's okay. You could also, if you want, go ahead and hit Alt and click on the evolution of that and you can type an expression like time times 50 or whatever just to give it a little bit of movement not that you'll really see it anyway so I'm also going to go ahead and add a fast blur drop that on uh, keyframe it at zero at the beginning and just go through turn it up a little bit clearly too much okay and finally I'm going to hit T which brings up the opacity set a keyframe and just go to the end and turn it off and there we go. We have our first bit of energy. We can give it a transfer mode like lighten. So that way you can still see the white, but it's not overpowering. You could use add as well, but um, I'm going with lighten for now because when there's a lot of these, if we use add, they'll start, uh, they'll just start going crazy and it'll get real bright real quick. 
Cool. So I got what I want out of that. Let's go back to our images. Let's see how many there are. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17. That means we want 17 copies of this right here. So let's go ahead and um, start duplicating it. I'm hitting Control D to do that. All right, I've got 17. Now I'm going to go through and just start replacing them with these other images. So this one on the top, we're going to replace with number 30. So the way you do that is select the top one and then select number 30 from your media browser, whatever that's called. Hold down Alt and just drag it and it'll replace it, but it will keep all of the effects and the keyframes that you made. So for the second one, um, we'll do the same thing. Highlight it, highlight this, and bring it in. Highlight your second, highlight your third layer and uh, just replace it. Go ahead and do that for every single one of them. Okay, so now what that gives us is a bunch of crazy lines here, and that's sort of what we want, uh, not quite. So now we just need to move these all to the frame where they belong. And again, you know what frame they belong on because it's in the name. So this first one needs to be at frame 30. And if you hit the left and right bracket keys, that'll just move your layer to where you want it. The left one will move the endpoint of the layer. So now if we go over to frame 33 and I hit that bracket key, that'll put it exactly where I want it. And now check this guy out. You see this little dude here? When I go to frame 36, and I hit that bracket key, now he's got an outline around him. Right, exactly what we want. Heck yeah, it's a little bit hard to see, but I promise I'm about to fix that. But uh, we've got our energy popping up. So now let's go ahead and just collapse all of those. I'm gonna just duplicate our roto layer, bring him up to the very top. I'm gonna add a fill effect to it and just turn it black. That way, when I pre-compose all of these energy effects and that layer, and then change it to like an add transfer mode maybe, now it's like the energy is appearing behind him. Okay, so um, we might want to brighten this up. Yeah, that's looking better than me, but um, we can also fade the entire thing out over time. You know, you just set a keyframe for the opacity, go forward, so it's not, I don't want it, want it on the entire time. And then uh, finally, I want to go ahead and add a new white solid and put that below that pre-composition and use it as a luma mat. So what this does is if we go ahead and just look at that, it's hard to see because the checkerboard is also white, but that just gives us a transparent background so that when we do our next step, which is to use it as a displacement map, it'll actually work. So let's go ahead and pre-compose that and move all the attributes to new composition. I'm going to call it energy. It's nice to say organized. So we can turn that back on with our add transfer mode. And let's add an adjustment layer below it and call it displacement. And we'll add our displacement map effect to it. And just use the energy layer as a displacement and then just kind of turn that up a little bit. I tend to overdo this, so uh, maybe maybe don't overdo it, but I'm not really qualified to give you that advice. Okay, and as the energy fades off, the displacement goes away also. It just does it automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. So now for this energy, I want to do some stuff to it. I want to add a vector blur to it, just a little bit. I like to do this with energy effects because it's going to make the highlights just uh, turn really sharp and it's also going to meld it all together you know make it look like it's one like one aura rather than several different layers that we animated just in my opinion and we can go ahead and also add a glow to it and this first glow i'm going to make really small like a, a small radius that's a little bit too intense as well and then i'll duplicate it make a second glow and this one i'll make huge and when you make it big that kind of dials down the intensity also and that's just going to help mimic the way light actually looks. And then to colorize it, I want to go ahead and use Video Copilot's plugin, the Color Vibrance, which it is a third party plugin, but it's free and it's easy to use and it's great. So I recommend checking it out. Look how quickly we got a nice blue color. A little bright though, so why don't we just turn down the brightness a little bit. The last effect is before Ant-Man pops on, we need like a, a bright flash. I was doing this in the actual short using no light factory, but you totally don't have to. You can just do something like make a, a pinkish solid like this. Doesn't have to be pink. I don't think it was pink in the movie. I just, you know, I like pink. I like it. I think it looks good, especially with blue. So let's go ahead and do that. Add a, a big circle mask to it. And fill that out real good, like real, real, real good. And change the mode of that to add. And then we're just gonna leave it on for two frames and set keyframes for the opacity. Just move down to zero. So it's like one frame bright, one frame still there, but less bright. 
And another thing you can go ahead and do is just duplicate that and go into your mask and just bring the expansion down. Maybe bring the feather down. It'll give you more of a, a hot spot there in the middle. For one last final touch, you can add some sparks. Let's go find some. Well, not this one. Who's stopping me? So I'll go ahead and just download that, bring that into my project. And I'm just gonna stick it right here and give it an add transfer mode. And go back to my energy layer and copy the color effect so I could paste it onto the explosion here so it'll have the same colors. It's bigger than I need it to be. Scale it down. Just add a little something something to that beginning. And you guys, that's it. So if you like this tutorial, uh, why don't you go ahead and give it a thumbs up uh, and leave us a comment. If you didn't like it, go ahead and leave us a mean comment. And you can also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more stuff exactly like this. And you can also keep up with us through Facebook and Instagram if you're into those types of things. We post some cool stuff on there as well. And that's about all I have to say. Bye!